Hey, it's Elizabeth. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a fall cook with me for you guys and we're going to be making three healthy fall recipes plus one little sweet treat. These meals are so yummy and cozy and they're perfect for this time of year. So let's just get right into the video. So the first recipe we're going to be making today are some butternut squash bowls. So for this recipe what I do is I start by getting some organic basmati rice going in my instant pot and I just do a ratio of one to one with water and rice and then I'll let this cook for about 30 minutes. I add some salt in so it has flavor and next I'm just going to get my butternut squash out and I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off so the skin's really clean because I like to leave the skin on it. I think it gives it great texture and then I'm going to get some grass fed ground beef going in my skillet and just kind of get that browning while I cube up my butternut squash before we roast it. So after my squash is all cubed up, I like to put it on a parchment lined baking sheet and then I'm just going to start seasoning it. I like to season it with some olive oil and then I'll do a little bit of pepper, not too much because my kids don't like a lot of spice, but I'll do some pepper, some paprika, and then salt of course. And I'll just kind of rub that in and massage it all over and then I'm going to pop this into my oven and bake it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some sage to add to my ground beef. That way it tastes more like sausage, but I don't know, it, where I am, it's really, it's really hard to find good quality sausage. And so I kinda like to take grass-fed ground beef and just make it into my own sausage. So to do that, I just like to add sage, black pepper, garlic, and salt, and it kinda gives you that sagey sausage flavor, but it's so much healthier than what you can find at the grocery store. I love to add in extra vegetables and sneak them in wherever I can. So in this dish, a great way to do that is by adding a bunch of spinach into the sausagey mixture because it just kind of wilts away and you don't really notice it. So I just add that in and then let that wilt down for a few minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get my squash out of the oven because it's done now. It's nice and crispy and I love it when the edges are just a little bit brown because there's so much flavor in that. So once my rice was done cooking in the Instant Pot, I just go ahead and add that into my ground beef mixture and I just stir it all together. And then I'll top it with the butternut squash because I think it looks really pretty and my kids are always excited to see the orange like pumpkin color on our food. And so I'll just put that over the top, serve it family style. We love this recipe for fall and it's so much easier than making like a stuffed squash and it's a little more kid friendly too. So for dinner tonight, I'm going to be making some boneless, skinless chicken thighs along with some apples and onions that are all going to braise together with thyme and chicken stock. And it is also optional, but you could do some apple cider in it as well as part of the braising liquid. If you don't want to add sugar to the meal, you can just leave it with the apples and the chicken stock. And it's kind of going to be like an apple cider chicken along with some of my quick cabbage salad. This recipe is so delicious and I think you're really gonna love it. So all I do is I start out by putting some olive oil in a skillet and I like to do it in a skillet that can go in the oven. So I'll just pop some boneless skinless chicken thighs in there and season them with pepper and paprika and salt and garlic. And then I'll let those sear up and get nice and brown. And in the meantime, I'm going to slice up a sweet yellow onion. Usually chicken marinades have a bunch of sugar in them, whether it's from like barbecue sauce or something like that, or even just adding brown sugar. So I really like using apples in this recipe because it gives you that same kind of sweetness, but in a much healthier way. And it's perfect for fall when apples are in season. You can use a Honeycrisp apple, a Braeburn apple. I'm actually using a Pink Lady today. You could even use a green apple. I think it would hold up really well with roasting, but it'll be a little more tart. So after I chopped all that up, I'm just flipping over my chicken thighs and making sure they're browned on the other side too before I remove them from the skillet to put in the vegetables and the apples.
So you're just gonna wanna put in the apples and the onions into that same oil and all the little caramelized bits from the chicken and let those cook just for a minute to start to soften. And I season them with a little bit of salt because you wanna make sure that they have good flavor as well. And then I'm adding in one little carton of organic chicken broth and then adding my chicken back in. Like I said, you can use apple cider, but I actually skipped it because I didn't wanna add extra sugar. I just wanted to use the natural sugar from the apples. And then I added in some fresh thyme from the garden and I'm just gonna bake that in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until everything is nice and caramelized. And in the meantime, I'm going to make my cabbage salad to serve on the side. So for this, all I do is I take a package of coleslaw mix or broccoli slaw mix, whichever you wanna use, and I'll just slice up a sweet onion and add that in, and then add apple cider vinegar, a little bit of avocado oil, and some salt and I just mix it all together and put it in the fridge. I actually think this is one of those meals that you could make ahead of time, and it would probably only get better as the chicken kind of marinades and the juices that we braised it in. And then obviously our cabbage salad, it sits in the fridge and it just gets better because it kind of softens up and takes on the flavor of all onion and apple cider. I'm actually making this ahead of time today because we're getting towards the weekend and I just want to knock some things out. It's only like one in the afternoon, but I'm going ahead and I'm cooking dinner so that I can easily just get dinner on the table and don't have to worry about it later. Sometimes if I have time in the afternoon or earlier in the day, I'll go ahead and get it cooked or get it started and going and then I have dinner ready and don't even have to worry about it. This dinner was so delicious. I really hope you guys try this out because it's such a unique flavor and it's so good. Even all the kids ate it, which is a sign that a recipe is really delicious. And I love that it's so healthy, but still has that comforting feel for fall. So if you're excited for some healthier fall recipes this year, make sure you subscribe because I've got plenty more coming your way. Okay, so tonight I'm going to be making some garlic thyme butter steaks. I'm gonna kinda like cook up some steaks in a skillet with butter and garlic and some fresh thyme. And then I'm also gonna pair that with some roasted Brussels sprouts and some red onion. And I make it really easy. I just pop it in my air fryer. And then I'm also gonna drizzle some maple syrup on them just a little bit to give them a hint of maple flavor. And I think this is really fun for the season especially. And then also I'm gonna throw in just a little sweet dessert tonight. I'm gonna take some of my pears that I picked up at the store this week and I'm gonna roast them with a little bit of butter and cinnamon and maybe I'll top that with either like some Greek yogurt or some whipped cream. We'll see what I get up to but yeah so that's the plan for tonight's dinner. This next meal was so good and it couldn't be easier. I honestly thought it was better than any of the steak restaurants in my small town. So I'm gonna be making this all fall. All I did was start out with some grass fed steaks and I seasoned that up with some salt and some pepper. You're just gonna wanna make sure that you season it really well on both sides so that there's plenty of flavor. Don't be afraid to go heavy on the salt because I promise you that salt crust gives steak amazing flavor. So after I did that, I just started chopping up some Brussels sprouts. I like to quarter them, so I'll cut them in half and then cut them in half again and sometimes if I'm short on time or holding my baby then I'll just do the Brussels sprouts whole and just pop those on a baking sheet because I can do it with one hand and so it makes for a really easy dinner but if you quarter it like this it will cook faster so I do like to do it this way and then I'm just gonna pop that on a parchment lined baking sheet for easy cleanup and I'm going to take a red onion and I'm going to slice it up into kind of thick slices and these roast down and caramelize and become so sweet and tasty with the Brussels sprouts and with the steak. I like to eat it with both of those. So all you're gonna wanna do for seasoning here is some avocado oil, I like to use that along with some maple syrup. Just a little light drizzle of maple syrup gives these such amazing flavor and caramelization. And then I just did a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, massaged it all in. And I also forgot to get the garlic powder, but I definitely put garlic powder on Brussels sprouts because it makes it so flavorful, it's so yummy. So I just massaged that all together. Now I'm just popping those into my little oven slash air fryer. I seriously love this thing. It's made cooking so much easier. And then while those are roasting, I'm gonna put my steaks in a really hot skillet and just get them searing up on both sides. I like to make sure there's tons of brown crust because that's where the flavor is. 
Tonight I decided to make a little sweet treat to go along with dinner. So what I'm making is kind of like a roasted pear and I just butter a casserole dish or a pie dish and then I'm taking some pears and I'm slicing them directly in half. I'm not even taking the stems off because it's easier and it looks beautiful. So I'm just taking out the cores of that with a little paring knife and I'm putting them in my buttered pie dish cut side up and then I'm going to melt some butter and we're going to add some vanilla to it and we're going to drizzle this over the pears and oh my goodness this is just such a great idea. I don't know why I haven't tried this sooner. Next I'm just taking a fresh cinnamon stick and I am just grating it right over the top of those pears and then we're gonna pop those into the oven. While my steaks are finishing up cooking in the skillet, I ran outside real quick and grabbed some fresh thyme. And we also have pumpkins that are officially grown out of our garden now. They're so beautiful. I can't wait to put them on the front porch, but we're actually kind of hiding them because I feel like it's too early to put pumpkins out. I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. Do you think it's too early to put pumpkins out on the front porch or are you guys already decorating for fall? Now I'm just chopping up some little shallots and garlic and thyme and this is all for our steaks. So we're basically going to baste the steak in some butter and add in the whole garlic cloves. And actually I didn't chop up the onions and shallots. Those are from the garden and they're so tiny I thought I'd just throw them in whole. So I ended up just putting them in for flavor along with that fresh thyme. And this is kind of a delicious like garlic, butter, thyme, and onion buttery flavorful sauce and I highly recommend trying this. It just gave it amazing flavor. So once that was all done, I put my roasted Brussels sprouts and onions on a platter, family style, put the steaks on there too, and then we just cut them up and sliced them up for the kids. And I just drizzled all that delicious butter over the top. And this was honestly one of the best meals I've had in a long time. And it's so simple to make. I'll definitely be making this again. After we had the steak dinner, I ended up just whipping up some fresh whipping cream and I just added in a tablespoon of maple syrup just to sweeten it up just a hair. So I just mixed that up and I pulled my pears out of the oven. They were sizzling, the butter was all over them and so yummy. And I just took those and dollop them with a dollop of the fresh maple whipped cream. Highly recommend, my kids loved it and thought it was so special. So I hope you guys try it out. I hope you guys loved today's video. I really enjoyed making it and I make a new video every single week. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.